Hello everyone, this is Mr. Mahmood here, helping you do better in maths by giving you tips and tricks on how to revise and also going through GCSE maths revision topics on YouTube. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do consider subscribing. Today's topic is estimating calculations by rounding. Now one important information before you start doing estimation is you will need to round the numbers to one significant figure. So let's quickly have a look at some examples of how to round to one significant figure. Then we'll be looking at calculations by rounding. So let's have a look at a number. Say for example we have 234. I want to round this number to one significant figure. So I have my first significant figure. So if this number starts with a number between 1 to 9 then we have our significant figure. Now how I do it is by drawing a line after the first significant figure and then look at the number after the line. Now if this number is 5 or over then I will need to add 1 to my first significant number. Now here we can see that this number is 4 or less therefore we don't need to add any numbers. So the two remains unchanged. Now the next two digits we need to replace them with zeros. So 234 rounded to one significant figure is 200. So in other words we are rounding this three digit number to the nearest hundred. Let's have a look at an example where we actually have to round it up. So for example we have 256 we have our first significant figure between 1 to 9. Look at the number after the line and we can see that this number is 5 or over. So that means we need to add 1 to our, our first number. So 2 add 1 is 3 and the next two digits become zeros. So 256 rounded to one significant figure is 300. Let's have a look at some decimal examples. Say for example we have 0 0.543. Now the number starts with 0 so therefore we don't have a significant figure. So let's look at the next number after the decimal. So we have a 5. It is a significant figure. Draw the line after the first significant figure. Now look at the number after the line which is Four or less so therefore we don't need to add 1 to this number here so this will remain unchanged so our rounded number is going to be 0 0.5 now if I put hundreds of zeros after a decimal number and carry on this will not make a difference to this number so we can leave our answer as 0 0.5 so 0 0.543 rounded to one significant figure is 0 0.5. Let's have a look at another one. 0 0.563. 0 is not significant. Look at the number after the decimal. We have a 5. We've got a significant figure. Draw the line after the 5. Look at the number after the line. We can see it's 5 or over. Therefore, we need to add 1 to this number here. So that number becomes 0 0.6 and these two numbers don't need them now because we rounded to one significant figure. So 0 0.563 rounded to one significant figure is 0 0.6. Now let's have a look at some estimation. So we're going to look at some calculations and we're going to round them to one significant figure and estimate. So let's have a look at the first question. Say for example we have 112 multiplied by 68. Now look at the first number. We have a 1. We have a significant figure. So we have 1. And look at the number after the line. There is a number which is 4 or less. So we don't need to add any number to the 1. So therefore the 1 remains unchanged and the rest of the digits become 0. So 
So 112 rounded to one significant figure is 100. 68. Got the first significant figure, draw the line, look at the number after the line, and we can see this number is 5 or over, so therefore we're going to add 1 to the 6. So the 6 becomes a 7, and the 8 becomes a 0, turning into a 0. Now, when you do this type of calculation, the quickest way to do it is multiply the first two digits, so 1 times 7 is 7, and add the number of zeros. So 1, 2, 3, add the three zeros. Let's have a look at another example, a division one, 68 divided by 1.9. Let's round 68 first, draw the line, look at the number after the line, it is 5 or over, therefore we are going to add 1, that becomes 7. That number becomes 0, divided by one significant figure. We've got the first significant figure. Cut the number after the line. This is 5 or over, so we're going to add 1. So this number becomes 2.0. So 70 divided by 2, we have an answer of 35. So that's our answer. Now let's have a look at slightly uh, more complicated uh, calculations with uh, fractions. Now in your GCSE maths exams you're more likely to get a calculation with fractions in your non-calculator maths exam. So let's have a look at a question. So we have 48.9 multiplied by 9.9 .9 and divide this by 11.3. Just fix that nine. Okay, now the rule is still the same. We're going to round the numbers to one significant figure. So let's round this number to one significant figure. Draw the line after the first significant figure. Look at the number after the line. We can see it's five or over. So we add one. So this number will become five. And the rest of the digits becomes zero. Multiply this by, let's round this number. So we got the first thing significant figure which is nine number after the line is five or over so we are going to add one now if you add one to nine that becomes ten point and the digit after the decimal will become zero and in the denominator we have eleven point three so first significant figure found draw the line the number after the line is four or less so therefore the number remains unchanged so that number will become 0 10.0 0. now we need to get the calculation like this always simplify the top so we can see a calculation let's simplify the top calculation the uh, numerator 50 times 10 is 500 and divided by 10 and 500 divided by 10 is 50 so dividing top and bottom the numerator and denominator by 10 so our answer is 50 now these calculations are quite common in foundation <coughs> excuse me now these calculations are quite common in foundation and higher maths exams uh, let's do another calculation Say for example we have 206 multiplied by 13.1 divide this by 0 0.48 206 rounded draw the line after the first significant figure look at the number after it is four or less therefore two will remain unchanged and the rest of the digits become zero multiply this by the first significant found Draw the line. The number after the line is four or less, so one will remain unchanged, and the rest of the digits become zero. And on the denominator, we have 0 0.48. Zero is not significant, so let's have a look at the next one. Four is significant, so draw the line after the four, 
and look at the number after the four, which is five or over, which is eight. So we're going to add one to the four. So our number will become 0 0.5. Now let's do the calculation. So 200 multiplied by 10 is 2000. Divide this by 0 0.5. Now, we are dividing a whole number by a decimal. Now, depending on how good you are at um, mental calculation, I always think about uh, if I'm dividing 1 by half, my answer will be 2, because 2 halves fit into 1. So therefore, if I divide 10 by half, my answer will be 20. If I divide 20 by half, my answer will be 40. So I'm always doubling. The answer will always double. So if I divide 2,000 by 0 0.5, my answer will be 4,000. But if you, not sure, if you are not sure how to do this calculation mentally, I would always suggest to change the decimals into a whole number. So to change 0 0.5 to a whole number, I need to multiply it by 10. Therefore, I will need to multiply the numerator by 10 as well. So that will give us... 20,000 divided by 5. Now 5 goes into 24 times. And we have 1, 2, 3 zeros. So 1, 2, 3. So our answer is 4,000. And that's it, guys. So we have estimated calculations by rounding to one significant figure. Just to recap, the one rule you have to remember is, first of all, when you have an estimation question, always look out for the keyword. They could also give you estimating calculations in worded problems or like a real life problem solving question. So always look out for the word estimate. As soon as you, as soon as you see that word, always try to round the numbers to one significant figure and then do the calculations okay so our next video is going to be on factors multiples and primes so if you haven't subscribed yet please do consider subscribing and keep up with the GCSE maths revision topics thank you and if you are taking your mock exams then good luck with your exams and good luck with your GCSE maths exams. Mr. Mahmood helping you do better in maths.